Hi, and welcome to this week's installment of the Frank and Mary Show. My name is Liz Tridiak, and I am the director here at the Northborough Senior Center. Usually, I would have Arthur Bergeron, who's an elder law attorney with Merrick O'Connell, with us here, but he couldn't make it today, and he, for some reason, trusted me to do the show without him. So um, let me introduce you to Frank and Mary first, who are Frank and Mary. They're our fictional couple who live in Northborough. They want to stay in their house and live in Northborough through to the end of their lives. Um, and so on this show here, we talk about all the things that are important to Frank and Mary and what they should know so they can stay in Northborough and age in place, which is the goal that we want people to um, achieve. So jump right into the show. Today, I have with me Frank Dutt, who is our AARP um, tax aid volunteer, and he coordinates all of the tax um, preparation assistance here at the Northboro Senior Center. And Frank, if you wouldn't mind just giving us a little background about yourself for people who have never used our services of the tax prep assistance and have never met you before, how did you get to be where you are today? Okay, um, I started this about 16 years ago when we lived in Webster, New York, outside of Rochester. And uh, I had just retired from Eastman Kodak, looking for something to do, saw this and, and volunteered. And I fell in love with doing taxes, believe it or not. I'm not a, an accountant or anything else. And why I fell in love with it is all the neat people you meet. There's mm -hmm. just so many, um, people who are, are so anxious about doing taxes and it really isn't that bad and you get a chance to help people they're happy and you're happy and maybe in doing it all we can actually save people some money too that's that's kind of my goal i pretend it's a game and my game is to save whatever money i can so that's how i got into it and then i came over here to uh, massachusetts about 11 years ago to be with my daughter husband and grandkids and I live in Hudson. I'm not a Northboro person, but uh, uh, I actually started doing this when I moved here. The only vacancy was at the center in Northboro. So uh, I started, and at the time we did about 30 returns, and we're now up to close to 150. So uh, over the ensuing 11 years, we really grew a lot. And the only limit is volunteers. So if you have any inclination to volunteer, Give Liz a call and we'll get in touch. And uh, it's a little late for this year, but we always need volunteers. We're limited solely by uh, the volunteers we have. Wow, 150. That's I can't I can't even wrap my mind around that. That's a lot of tax returns. How long yeah. does it take you to do one? Uh, we do um, uh, about an hour return in normal times. In Northboro, we would have two, three, or four people doing taxes. It depends on, like I said, the number of volunteers. And um, we would have our appointments, and we're there for four or five hours a day, uh, one occasionally two days a week. And that's that's how we get up to the 150. I don't do all those in any way, shape, or form. Um, mm -hmm. I should mention that Northboro is one of the sites um, the, we're in what's called the district, and we have 45 sites in uh, the Worcester County and a couple surrounding towns, like Hudson, which isn't in Worcester County, but which is part of our group. So people from outside of Northboro can come here and get their taxes done? Yeah, in normal times, yes. For this year, because we're starting late, and we'll get into that in a minute, plus because of all the procedural things we have to do, I would expect that we're only going to be able to do about half of what we would do in normal times. So by law, we cannot exclude people, but we can give preference the first couple of weeks to the local residents, and then we'll open to everybody. Wow. So you keep saying during normal times, what was it like last year when the world was kind of in this chaos, um, did you did we do taxes here at all? I kind of came on late in the game. Yeah, right. You came on after 
after or right at, i think right when we closed actually yeah uh we had in the first week of march um we were going along happily all along our way and then um the national aarp group said okay we can't do this anymore and, and we had to shut down the first week of march and that was it and then um a couple they came up with some ideas of trying things and a couple of sites um one up near Lemonster opened on a trial basis in June, I think, uh, to try some things out. But we had to shut down, and that was it. And this year is going to be very different. But maybe at some point I should get into that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you have to follow everything that AARP instructs, right? So this isn't that's right. Our personal decision. It's not your decision on whether we can do taxes or how we do them. You're following guidelines from the national office, sure. essentially. Exactly. The IRS sets out guidelines for volunteers. AARP is the largest by far volunteer tax preparer. And so they have some leverage. And we're allowed to do some things that other sites aren't because of the tra training. But basically, the AARP lawyer and the IRS lawyers get together and decide what to do. And then, um, and, and most times it's not that bad. This year, there's a whole new manual we have to do to follow these diff different procedures for what they call limited or no contact. Oh, wow. Do you want to get into that now? What What's this year yeah. going to look like? Yeah. Um, we're going to do something called uh, limited contact by that the process would be if somebody wanted to have the return done they would call the senior center the senior center would have a very short conversation to, uh, get their name and phone number and if they have internet and ask a few simple questions uh, to eliminate things that we can't do so they don't doesn't doesn't get run in the process and we're going to try again to give preference to low and lower income people to start. So some of the people that had a little higher income may not be able to use our services this year. Mm -hmm. um, so um, after the, that call, um, my group then will work with the center, get the names, and we'll go through a series of interviews. The first one would be a quick preliminary interview to make sure people understand the, the process that they agreed to the process because they have to sign re release form that we're going to do this um, virtually and not in person. And and then after, if that's okay, they'll make an appointment for a formal inter intake interview, which will last maybe a half an hour. It includes the form that we've always filled out, plus additional paperwork, uh, because we don't have the opportunity to sit down and have a dialogue, we have to have everything up front. We'll mm -hmm. get all that information and we'll schedule an appointment to come to the center to have their documents scanned. Uh, for the scan appointment, they would come to the center, uh, wait outside until they're called in, and then would come in and uh, have a very short uh, interview to make sure all the paperwork is there and then their documents would be scanned, given back to them, and they would leave. We're planning on that being 15 minutes or less. Uh, very limited contact with face shields and masks and all the other things to keep people safe. So now we now have the scanned in information. Um, we would um, uh, use that scanned information to prepare, prepare a return and check it. When the return is all done, they would get a phone call saying your return is done. If they have the internet, uh, do an online review of the return. If not, we would do the best we can over the phone. And if they're okay, they would come back into the center for a very short five minute um, appointment to sign the release form and to pick up a copy and we're all done. And then we would e-file obviously, but so that's, the process uh two limited contacts less than 20 minutes total um everything else is done behind the scenes yeah it sounds like a lot of steps but it's really 
the steps are in the logistics and the planning. It's pretty simple for people who are calling us and getting their appointments scheduled. Just get your paperwork That's together. Right. <laughs> the idea is, yeah, the idea is that it's it's um, no impact to the taxpayer. It's a, a lot of extra work for us setting it up and and then initiating all these calls. And it, like the, one of the other downsides, I'll miss what I enjoy is interacting with the people because. Uh, that's hard, harder to do on the, on the phone call. And the other thing is that we'll, we can't use our private phones. We'll be doing all this via Google, Google meet, and, uh, it'll be transparent to, to people. Like they just won't know our phone numbers. Oh, another requirement from the IRS. Wow. And any of the, the people doing the return. Well, that's great. I mean, it keeps everyone's um, information safe and secure and protects people's privacy. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else that people should know about taxes this year? Well, the big, yeah, the big thing this year is all the, the stimulus payments. Um, most taxpayers are, were eligible for two stimulus payments, one back in the May time period which was uh, $1,200 for the taxpayer, $1,200 for a spouse, and then $500 for each uh, dependent under 17. And then, so for seniors, basically $2,400, a married mm -hmm. couple, 1,200 single. And then a second payment in January of $600 for the taxpayer, spouse, and any dependent under 17. Um, they, those payments were based on the 2019 income tax. And if, if you didn't file income tax, uh, especially if you didn't have a refund, there was problems of where they sent the money. And if you never filed a tax return, which includes a fair amount of seniors who have social security and low income, they may or may not have gotten that money, but they're eligible for it. And the only way to get it is to file a 2020 tax return. Technically, all those payments were in advance of a refund on the 2020 tax return. So if you didn't get the money and you thought you should have, for whatever reason, the only way to reconcile that is to file a 2020 tax return. There's no place you can go to this. Even if you think you got a check and it was lost, you have to file a tax return and then you'll ask for the money. They say we already sent it and that'll start the dialogue. There's no special number to call or anything else. So I, I can imagine for um, some taxpayers, especially older couples that don't have a computer and don't know much about this and never filed a tax return, uh, they could have, have up to, uh, what is it, $3,600 waiting for them if they would file a tax return. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. so important because that question has come up when people have called in earlier this year, even um, asking about their um, their stimulus checks. And, you know, I, I haven't before talking to you right now, I haven't seen that information out anywhere. So if people have questions about where their stimulus money is, call here to the senior center. We'll set you up with an appointment for filing your 2020 tax return. And Frank, was there anywhere else that they could, um, or you would recommend they find information on this? They can go to irs.gov right on the, when you go to that website, right there, there's a thing that says, where's my stimulus payment? And if you click on that, um, there's a way to see if they sent one to you you need some information um and then basically what i just recited is on that site and they can confirm it including uh said in a much nicer way don't call us we don't answer the phones you have to file a return it's said a little nicer but it comes through pretty strong oh geez <laughs> so people um people at home who are watching this if you want to call and schedule your 2020 tax returns we have been asking people to call us after February 15th to give us a little bit of time to plan. 
we're filming this today, which is the 9th. So hopefully on the 15th, we don't have a massive tidal wave of people calling us, but uh, <laughs> we're here and ready to answer the phones and ready to start booking appointments for March. So right. starting the 15th, because I haven't given you the information yet. <laughs> and we'll do, we'll do taxes from the 3rd of March until just right around April 15th. Um, okay. And well, because of all the limitations, my expectation is we'll only be able to do about half as many as last year, unless there's an extension. Um, I would hope for an extension because um, we could we can't even physically start un until the 15th of um, February. Mm. Now, in my group, I'm waiting a little longer because I'm having trouble with volunteers. Um, and then we'll start March 1st. And hopefully we'll hear we can do more at the end, but uh, that's not a given right now. Okay. And can I make one other thing for seniors that uh, is a lot of people don't do and they should? Um, Absolutely. There, there's a, a provision if you are required to take a minimum required distribution from your IRA, um, if you have that money sent directly to a charity out of within the minimum distribution, um, it does not count as income to you. So um, if you don't file a uh, itemized deductions, which most people don't anymore, this reduces your income by whatever that gift is. Now for $100, maybe your uh, the person who, the company that does your IRA would do it. But if you have a gift of $1,000 or more, most of the companies that handle IRAs will do this <clears throat> and it's a way of saving uh, for somebody who item does not itemize roughly 10 or 15 percent of whatever you give, give right off the top. So I would encourage you if you support a charity, um, especially like a, a that would probably be a church or a college. That's a much better way of doing it than writing a check directly. Right. Or even um, like the Friends of the Northboro Senior Center. Correct. Correct. <laughs> if you want to give a substantial gift, that would be a perfect way of doing it. Good, good plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so, so that's, that's all I, uh, oh, what, one other thing about uh, um, IRAs. One of the other changes was that um, instead of being 70 and a half to start the requirement, Required minimum distribution. You now have to be uh, set. And now you, you don't have to. So, um, that's a, another change, which would be, I think, people born in uh, before 1958 uh, now have to take their required distribution. So they should talk to their their uh, IRA people about that if, if they have any questions. And if they don't, if they're required to take it and they don't, and the IRS catches them, there are substantial penalties, mm -hmm. up to upwards of fifty percent. It's very nasty if you don't you don't do that. Yeah. Wow. So um, ask about that. Great. Well, Frank, so that's that's about it for things that involve seniors. That's fantastic information that I learned a lot myself and. Uh, taxes actually scare me. So I, I feel talking to you, you're so knowledgeable and I feel more comfortable about it now. <laughs> so anyone who's out there listening, Good. if they need to book their appointment, you call us here at the Senior Center, 508-393-5035. Call us starting after February 15th and we will um, do our best to get you booked for your tax return with our AARP Tax Preparation Assistance Program. So thank you very much to Frank Duff, and uh, we'll see you all next time here on the Frank and Mary Show. <laughs>